The price of freedom is death. We are coming to get our check. Black First Brothers and Sisters, welcome to the Afro Elite YouTube channel. I am your host, Afro Elite. Before we get started, if you guys haven't done so already, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you do not miss out on any future content. Also, please leave a like and share this on your various social media platforms because that really does help the reach and growth of the channel. Thank you all for watching and for all of what you guys do to support this channel. Thank you all very much. Now, I'm going to be reacting to a TikTok that was has gone viral on Twitter, but it's from TikTok. But the original video has been deleted. I looked for it, tried to find it, tried to find the video before, and he's deleted a lot of his stuff. But this is a Haitian tether who said some things that definitely need to be addressed. And then there's a subject around this that I would like to speak on also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the video uninterrupted, the full thing, and then I'm going to circle back. I'm going to leave my commentary. Then I'm going to follow that up with uh, additional commentary about the subject around this video. Thinking that, oh yeah, you sound white. It's not me sounding white, it's me white, it's me sounding normal. See, in the rest of the world, we live a normal life which is kind of equal or kind of the same pattern of what you guys attribute to white people here. And the reason for that is because me growing up in Haiti, I never had to compete with another group of race of people to be different than them. You guys have been competing for so long and did not want to be like white people. So you guys start developing your own culture so you can be different from white people. So you develop this gangsterish mentality. What's up, man? What's what going on, brother? What's up? You you sag, you drag, you you, you nap your hair, you let your hair go dirty and, and all this stuff because you want to be different from white people. Whereas in Haiti, I didn't have to do that. So I had to be normal. So that's why when Jamaicans, Haitians, Africans, and other people from the Caribbean come around here or from other black culture come around here, y'all think we're acting better than y'all. Where, where, whereas we're not trying to act better than black people who live here their whole life. It's just that we don't have to compete for, for notoriety. So we were normal. We raised normal. That's the problem. Okay, now I'm going to circle that back and I'm going to give my commentary as he's speaking. Now, before we get into this, I would like to explain something. What you see right above what he's saying, the comment above is because TikTok, what you can do is you can make a video and then people can leave comments under your video. And then you can make a video response to that comment. And when you do that, that comment is going to be pinned up somewhere um, in the video. So this video he did is actually a response to a comment from another video that he did. I can't find the original video that he did to where they made this person leave this comment. I can't even honestly find the original, this video on TikTok. This actual video came from Twitter. So he deleted a whole bunch of stuff. So I don't know exactly what provoked the person to make that comment, but I can kind of imagine and I'm going to read the comment and you can probably fill in the blank as well, too. The comment says, spoken like a Sambo white lover, you come to my country because yours was shit. All and all of your benefits are a result of my ancestors. What about yours? OK, so you can tell this is probably uh, this is a foundational black American who took it, got offense to his his tether behavior. He must have been acting like a tether in the video to this previous, which made this foundational black American righteously stand up and defend himself and his nation because he was probably talking hella trash about black Americans. I'm just giving you like a, a prefix before this uh, this video. Then he goes into, oh, I sound white. You guys think I'm sounding white. I don't even know where that came from because that doesn't address anything about what he said in this comment. He's replying to this comment. I just read you the comment and his reply in this video was just a whole bunch of bashing, but it had nothing at all to do to address the comment that was made. So I don't know, know what he's talking about, but now I get to kind of respond to the actual video. Thinking that, oh yeah, you sound white. It's not me sounding white. It's me white. It's me 
sounding normal. See, in the rest of the world, we live a normal life, which is kind of equal or kind of the same pattern of what you guys attribute to white people here. And the reason for that is because me growing up in Haiti, I never had to compete with another group of race of people to be different than them. You guys have been competing for so long and did not want to be like white people. So you guys start developing your own culture so you can be. OK, before he gets into that. I want to say. um Different cultures operate differently. Different cultures speak differently. Everybody in Haiti doesn't even speak the exact same way. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that he's all like, oh, I'm not sounding white. I'm sounding normal. And, and the, 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 the narrative that everybody sounds normal except black Americans because we don't speak in this proper King's English like they think we do. Let me address some of the the rumors to this. The whole the rumor that white people speak in this very sophisticated, well spoken English is a stereotype, a false stereotype. They speak in a in a different way, in a kind of different dialect. It sounds a little bit um, weaker. They don't really speak for, as with as much bass. They don't really speak from the chest. They sound different than we do but they're not more advanced in the English language than the average black American is. To be totally honest, and I'm going to speak based off of my experience, based off of my personal experience, black Americans, foundational black Americans, we have a higher, more advanced vocabulary than the average white person. And that's just me based off of my experience. And I'm pretty sure you guys have similar experiences in your life as well, too. The average um, member of the dominant society or dominant society member, they don't really speak in this very advanced English like they're stereotyped to. OK, just because they speak kind of um, slower or more nasally does not mean that they're more sophisticated or more advanced. Also, too. Black in, in this country, very much so specifically, FBA, we pretty much lead the nation as far as the English language goes. And when I say that, I mean the fact that what we say, it becomes popularized and then everybody else starts to pick that up. What we determine is cool becomes popularized by everybody, not even just in America, but also outside of America. And the things that we determine are lame, the things that we determine aren't cool, that stuff gets dropped. The whole the saying what's up, saying sup, saying bro, saying all of these things. These are things that we make popular. These are things that we popularize. And these are things that had it not been for us would not be popularized. And we're just talking about the language in general. We have such an influence on this language. We influence all languages around the entire world. You, everywhere in the world, you can go. The English language has affected the way people communicate by calling people bro, sis. All, all that stuff comes from us. What's up? That stuff comes from us. You know, uh, these things we popularize as black Americans. Why are you trying to say we come up with our, our different dialect? We've always had a different culture and we didn't develop it to be separate from anybody. We developed it because we have our own lineage and we have our own history. And with that rich history and with that rich language, we've developed something and we're, we're continually doing that. We're developing stuff that everybody in the world follows the term cap all all of these things come from black american history and lineage and culture and everybody else follows that why so why are you trying to say everybody talks normal well y'all can be normal we're spectacular in our language so much so all of the normal people are trying to imitate fba so that's really what it is but let me continue to play the rest of the video 
be different from white people. So you develop this gangsterish mentality. What's up, man? What's what going on, brother? What's up? You you sag, you drag, you you, you nap your hair, you let your hair go dirty, and and all this stuff because you want to be different from white people. Okay, that's the pedestalization of the dominant society. Okay, if we want to talk about cleanliness. Black people were the ones who taught them how to clean, taught them how to bathe. There was like a trend going on a couple years ago where you had rich celebrities from the dominant society talking about, you know, I, I only shower like maybe once or twice a month. You know what I'm saying? I, I wash my hair and maybe my hands and my face and that's it. They they admitted that they just have a pattern of not bathing. I don't only bathe if I don't see the dirt, I'm not dirty. They have they literally said that. Okay, they have a history of that. So when you talk about oh, we let our hair go dirty, no black black Americans very specifically, we're the cleanest people in the country. If we're gonna be honest, we really are, especially in comparison to them. In comparison to them, we're very much so. Okay. He said we let our hair nap. Oh, get, we allow our hair to lock up and we get locks and stuff like that. That has nothing to do with them. That's our own culture that we do. Now, you talk about we sag and we do. First off, most um, black Americans don't do that. We don't do that. We don't, we're not out here sagging like that. That stereotype that we're, we're all trying to be gangsters and get what's up, my bro. First off, that's our dialect. That's the way we talk. And y'all love it because y'all talk like us. Y'all talk like us. Y'all come over here and y'all speaking the same slang, uh, trying to imitate the same culture. Y'all doing the same stuff we're doing. So that when you talk about, oh, y'all not talking normal, man, who wants to be normal? Y'all trying to be like us. And if we want to talk about this gangster mentality, you don't want to play that game because when we talk about the gangs in Haiti, and it, even the Haitian gangs in America, we talk about New York and Florida and all of the gangs right there. Y'all don't want to talk about that. Y'all don't really want to go down that road because if we go down that road, I promise you, it's not going to look good on you. So you can you can stop it. All. Oh, yeah. Y'all want to be gangsters so y'all can be separate from white people. Listen, if we want to talk about the origin of like gangs in this country, and maybe that's a topic for another video. We can talk about that. That stuff originated with them. We, as black Americans, we didn't have the need for gangs. We we were actually the most law about, and we still are, really, to be honest, the most law abiding citizens in this very country. Gangs, we weren't doing none of that until, to be honest, it, when you. Uh, take a look at the entire American history from start to finish, like from the origin to the present day right now, gangs are a relatively newer thing in black culture within like the last, um, like, um, what, four to five decades or something like that. You can't go like a hundred years into the past and find a, a bunch of black gangs. If you go to, uh, if you go a hundred years in the past, you can find white gangs you can find gangs of white people, and I don't necessarily mean that you can't find one or two because there is some got probably gonna be somebody in the comments all like, oh, oh, there was a and they were cowboy. No, listen, I'm talking about just culturally speaking, that's not something that we allow. And to be honest, it's not something that culturally speaking we condone today anyway. Gangs don't represent our culture. OK, most of our culture do not participate in any sort of criminality and we do not uh, condone gangsterism. You want to talk about gangsterism, the white people that you're pedestalizing, they're the biggest gangsters of the world. You want to talk about American history of gangs, you can talk about the KKK and you can talk about all of the other um, white nationalist gangs that they created back in the day and that that still exists to this very present day. You can talk about the European gangs coming over here, like the Irish mob, the Italian mafia, and all of those people coming over here, the Irish mob and all of that. You can talk about all of those things. But when we talk about gangs and gangsterism, especially in America, everybody wants to point the finger to the Bloods and the Crips and all of in, in the black gangs who don't nearly make up as much damage 
uh, to um, the American society as these non-black gangs do, but nobody wants to address the non-black gangs. And when they do address it, they address it like as a thing of the past that doesn't exist anymore. When they ex they existed from the very beginning and they still exist to this day. And as, as a Haitian, I advise you to be very careful when you talk about criminality and gangsterism, because I I am going to be very honest with you. Chicago, yet yeah, people want to talk about. Oh my God, Chicago so bad. There's so many gangs. Um, Chicago doesn't have anything at all on the stuff that's going on in Haiti. Chicago doesn't. That sh y'all don't really want to play that game. I swear to you, you don't want to play that game. Let's continue. Is only a. a few more seconds left in the video because we're going to have to have another type of conversation after this, the conversation around this video. Whereas in Haiti, I didn't have to do that. So I had to be normal. So that's why when Jamaicans, Haitians, Africans, and other people from the Caribbean come around here or from other black culture come around here, y'all think we're acting better than y'all. Where, where, where so, okay. See, here's the thing. I know I just stopped it. Here's the thing. We don't think you're acting better than us. We know you're not acting better than us. The thing is, you guys think that because you guys don't get treated as harshly. I'm just going to be honest. You guys don't get treated as harshly because of the fact that a lot of you all, I'm not going to say all, but a lot. And I'm going to be honest. Most of you all who come over here, you all acquiesce to the system of ABR, anti-black racism. You all acquiesce to that. You guys turned a blind eye to racism. When we call it out, everything's not about race. You can't blame the white man. Uh, you guys do that. And you guys come over here damn near as a wannabe buffer class between uh, the dominant society and black society. And because of that, you guys are not as targeted as foundational black Americans. And because of that, you have people at the white folks at your job. Oh, my God. Um, uh, you guys are so much. It's not we don't hate black people. It's, you guys are coming over here. You're so great, man. I love you so much. It's just them, them Negroes over there. You guys are so much better. That's what you guys hear. You guys believe your own hype. You guys look down on black Americans. You guys have this anti-black American vitriol. So that's what you guys think. We don't think that. Hey, no, black Americans are not at all. I promise you. I can't speak for everybody, but right now I'm probably going to speak for everybody. We don't come over here thinking that y'all better. We, we don't allow y'all to come over here because that's what happens. Y'all don't come over here and we are like, man, they're just so much smarter than us. There's just so much better than us. I wish we can act like Haitians. Said no black American ever. I promise you. I, I guarantee it. I guarantee we do not talk like that. We do not think like that. Not just, just about Haitians, Jamaicans, Africans, nobody. Y'all not coming over here making nobody jealous of you. I promise you. Whereas we're not trying to act better than black people who live here their whole life. It's just that we don't have to compete for for notoriety. So we were normal. We raised normal. That's the problem. Okay. Um, you raised normal, Lord. Listen. Okay. This guy's he's a sambo. He's a he's an extreme tether. And I'm going to be honest, he does not represent all of Haitians because there's some Haitians who are in this country who are straight up riders down to their soul they're straight riders okay and much respect to them and much respect to all of the b1 brothers and sisters who come over here and they rocking with us they riding with us they helping us um to the best degree that they can much respect to them this isn't a diss to them but i do want them to pay very close attention because this is a problem and this is one of the main reasons why i decided to make this video the problem is when there is disrespect by a tether um, nobody wants to address that except FBA. Now, when 
they get offended when Haitians, Jamaicans, other Africans, other Caribbeans, when they find something offensive, whether they're tripping or not, they make sure they go out of their way to make sure that that's known. They go out of their way to do that. Anytime they find something offensive, they're on Twitter about it. They're on YouTube about it. They're on Instagram about it. They make sure that whatever that they find offensive to their nation, to their culture, to anything like that, they put that on blast. Okay. And I'm not saying that they're necessarily wrong for that because I believe that, yeah, you should um, defend your nation anywhere you go. However, you should also realize you need to show respect to the natives in that nation, because I'm going to be honest, nowhere in the world do FBA go and we're sitting up there going to somebody else's land, living there. Because to be honest, we don't migrate in large numbers just to live there. Not, not really in large numbers, but we don't go over there and we don't say, oh, my God, look at the native population here. You guys don't act normal. You're dirty. You sag and you don't speak intelligent and we're better. We don't do that. That is not something that we do whatsoever. When we go over to these nations, especially when we're trying to live there, we don't go. We go over there showing the utmost respect and um, treating the, those people the way they deserve to be treated. I'm not saying that they deserve to be disrespected. I don't believe that you should be going anywhere and disrespecting the native population. I do not condone that whatsoever. Not from uh, somebody from Haiti, Jamaica, not from somebody from America. I don't believe you should be doing that. Okay. And there's probably going to be one or two people like, oh, well, this black American said, look, you can cherry pick uh, very few incidents, but to be honest, we have a culture of not doing that. We have a culture of respecting other people's cultures. We do not have a culture of going to anybody else's land and you guys finding thousands of videos of us saying, y'all lazy. Thousands of videos of us telling the native population, y'all suck, y'all uneducated, y'all not normal, y'all dirty. We don't do that. Yet that happens to us all of the time. It shows a lack of appreciation for all of the sacrifices that it took for you guys to come over here because the dominant society wasn't allowing you guys to come over here until Foundation Black Americans fought for the rights for you guys to come over here. You guys would not be allowed to come over here. You guys would be back in your homelands without the ability to come over here uh, to even visit for the most part, really, and especially to live. You guys wouldn't be able to do that. Until we fought for that right for you guys to do that. And it shows a lack of appreciation and it shows your hatred and vitriol and really jealousy of FBA. And the problem is that you guys don't want to address this. If the ones that even are riding, let me listen, let me speak to you. The ones that are actually riding, the ones that are respectful, the ones that are doing what they're supposed to be doing, that's good for you. OK, and keep doing that. That's a good thing that you guys are doing. Keep doing that. The problem is a lot of you guys say that. And then when you see somebody from your homeland disrespecting a black American or or just FBA culture in general, y'all don't say nothing. Y'all don't say anything at all. And then the second we say something, then it's, man, did you really have to go that far? Like, did you have to? Yes. Yes, we did. We have to take it there because if we didn't, you guys wouldn't have took it anywhere. The thing is, is that when we have our sambos, when we have our coons who say things against black society, who offend black people, who try to shuck and jive for the dominant society, we have a strong history of calling them out. We call them out instantly we make sure that they are pariah in a uh, black society we make sure we ostracize them okay you guys the ones who come over here and the ones that tether and because i'm not saying all of them do but the ones that do that they don't have the uh their culture calling them out they don't have other haitians being all like hey you should stop disrespecting black Americans. They don't have other Jamaicans saying, hey, that's disrespectful to black Americans. They come over here, they, they get to mocking. 
Dr. King, Rosa Parks, our civil rights leaders, they get to mocking our culture, they get to calling us gangs, calling us dirty, calling us lazy, calling us uneducated, and their population doesn't say anything. Whether they agree or disagree, they remain silent. But the second we say something about, oh, if we uneducated, we lazy, look at your homeland, then the whole group stands up like, oh my God, did you really have to go there? Yes, because you guys should have the responsibility, actually you really do, have the res the moral responsibility to make sure that you guys show respect to the people who sacrificed for you guys to come over here. You guys should be making sure that the foundation black Americans in this country get respected. We're not asking nobody to come and, and kiss our feet and worship us. We're asking, hey, it, for the ones that are coming over here, for the ones that are here, Y'all shouldn't be showing any disrespect because we don't go over to y'all land showing any disrespect. This is just a common courtesy. And, and y'all didn't do nearly the amount of sacrificing that uh, for us to come over there that it took for you guys to come over here. Historically speaking, y'all really didn't. And we don't go over there showing any bit of disrespect. And y'all coming over here showing disrespect, vitriol, hatred, jealousy, all of these things. And that does not get checked. And then the second we check it, it's FBA is a hate group. It's why are you guys being xenophobic? Why are you guys being divisive? Why are you guys starting a diaspora war? There would not be that if Haitians, and I'm speaking to Haitians specifically, not exclusively, but specifically because um, this guy in the video was Haitian. He name dropped other countries too, but he's specifically Haitian. But this can apply all throughout the diaspora when they come over and they disrespect they don't want to say anything, okay? They don't. That needs to stop. Before I, as a foundation black American, start addressing these problems, there should be thousands of Haitians saying, hey, man, that's not cool. Y'all need to stop. Y'all need to cut that out. Y'all need to stop that. But y'all don't. Then the second we say something about Haiti, that y'all halfway that y'all find offensive, y'all ready to blow the scene up and talk about we need to stop being divisive and stop having the diaspora war. Y'all need to stop because you guys are the ones who initiate all of this disrespect and we're the ones only responding to it. Now, I could I can make Haiti, just like how Donald Trump said, look like a shithole country. You know what I'm saying? Y'all want to talk about gangs and gangsterism and all that stuff. If I showed y'all Haiti, I'm promising y'all, y'all would look at Chicago like a damn paradise. The worst parts of Chicago like a paradise if I was to show y'all Haiti. And I'm not even necessarily trying to go there, but you guys are, when I say you guys, the tether class is taking it to that point. And it's taking it to that point because not just the tethers are coming over here is because the people who are not quote unquote tethers are allowing them to. So you guys are not directly tethers, but you're indirectly tethers because you guys are allowing and enabling the tethers to come over here and do that because you guys are not putting your foot in their ass when they say something that is disrespectful from now on when a tether says something that is disrespectful, especially being in America, especially being in America, when they something say something that is disrespectful, whether they're Haitians, Jamaicans, from, the, uh, from Africa, anywhere, their nation should be the first people to call them out, the very first people to call them out. The he says that he's Haitian. Haitian should have been the one dragging him because if we said something, like this, if that bit uh, that guy was a black American and he said the same thing about Haiti, there would be thousands of Haitians saying something. So there should be thousands of Haitians saying the same thing to him. So there should be thousands of Haitians dragging this dude, calling this dude out. But there isn't. That needs to stop. If that guy was Jamaican, Jamaicans need to be the first one on the line saying that they need to stop that. And, and the same with every single um black person from the diaspora outside of America, they need to be the first person to say something because to be honest, they let the tether class run them. Uh, all of Haiti are not filled with tethers. I don't believe that. I, I believe that there are some good, honest riders in Haiti, in Jamaica, in Africa, all throughout um, the diaspora. I do believe that. But the thing is, is that you all allow your tether class to run the yard. The tether class, they, they run everything. 
they represent the group. And that is because you guys do not do what is necessary to check them. The thing is with black Americans, we don't allow coons to run the group, sambos to run the group, sellouts to run the group, uncle. To, we don't allow that to happen because the second we see them, we the first ones call it. We instantly call them out like, oh, no, no, no. What he's on, we ain't on that. This man, he's he's selling out. He's ostracized. He's being disrespectful. He's ostracized. We don't believe in that. We don't condone that. And we check that person immediately. We And that is how we don't allow the coons to represent the group. You all are allowing the tethers to represent the group because y'all don't do what y'all supposed to do and check them like how we check ours. So y'all need to start doing that. But brothers and sisters, please let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. You should also be following me on my various social media pages, which is the Afro Elite on Twitter and then Afro Elite on Instagram. Also, if you haven't done so, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Leave a thumbs up and share this on your various social media platforms or to a family or friend, because that really does help the reach and growth of this channel. Thank you all for watching. Be one salute to you all. You all have a good one.